In a previous video, we checked out Perplexity AI and its chat facing interface. But in this video, we're going to check out their API, see its features, what it can do, how it can help us with building AI apps and AI agents. And then I'm also going to connect it to a new bubble app to show you guys how to implement it for yourselves. All right, let's get started. Okay, before we get started, it looks like we need to add a payment method within the Perplexity AI settings page. So I'm on Perplexity AI. I'm going to go to settings and then click API. Now it wants me to connect a credit card. So I'm going to click setup. Let me input all of these details. Okay, my card has been added. So it opens up a few boxes now. We got available credits, current usage and API keys. So I can't generate a new API key. I wonder if it's because I have to buy credits first. So let's click this. Let's just buy $5 to get started and click buy now and it's showing $5 pending. I still can't generate an API key. All right, I've refreshed the page. The $5 is in my available credits. I'm going to go down click generate API keys. All right, we got our API key. I've clicked on supported models and I mentioned in the previous video that I had a hunch the back end model was GPT 3.5 turbo. It actually appears to be Llama 3, which is very interesting for the pricing. This is extremely cheap for the 7B model. It's 20 cents per 1 million tokens for GPT-4 Omni. It's $5 per 1 million tokens for the inputs and $15 per 1 million tokens for the output. At the bottom of the pricing page, it talks about their online models. My guess is that these online models mean it's searching the web for its response. So it's charging a flat $5 fee per 1000 requests or half a cent per request. I think that's also pretty cheap for an API that searches the internet and gets live data results. All right, let's start setting up the API. So it only has one API endpoint and that is chat completions which is very familiar to our other models. They give us a curl request example on the right side. So let's open up a bubble app. We're going to go to plugins, the API connector. Let's click add another API. I'm going to call it perplexity AI. We're going to add a shared header. We need an authorization with our secret key and then an accept application JSON and a content type application slash JSON. So we'll go authorization first and then bear space. Let's go back to perplexity, copy this key, paste it in, add another shared header, accept, and I'm going to copy application slash JSON. There we go. Add another shared header content dash type, paste it in. And it's the same thing application slash JSON. Now I can expand this default API call name it chat completion. I want to use it as an action. It's a post request and the endpoint is up here. So let's copy this, paste it in scrolling down. We'll enter in our JSON body. I'll just copy this entire code. We'll use that default model that they have in the example. It is an online model, which is good. It also gives us a system message and a user message kind of like GPT four. So let's see if this works as is. I'm going to click initialize call and we get a successful result. So a few things we're not going to need in bubble. I like to ignore these fields. We don't need to know the model we used because we're putting it in the input. So I'm going to go ignore fields, ignore field. Let's ignore all of these. We definitely need the choices list, but we don't need this field, this field, the message role. We need the message content. We don't need the delta role or the delta content. I can also click show raw data. This is how the response body looks. And we get our answer here from the assistant. There are approximately 100 to 400 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy. Awesome. I'm going to click save. Now we can make these inputs dynamic. So I'm going to add this caret bracket around the text. And instead of be precise and concise, let's go system message that opens up a box down here and we'll do the same for the user content. So user 
content, carrot bracket. In Bubble, putting text around carrot brackets makes it dynamic, which means we can have our users within the web app input their own messages for each API call. Before I reinitialize the call, I'll enter in a system message that was the same, be precise and concise. We're gonna uncheck private, which means we can access it within the app. And then for the user content message, let's test out the model. What is something that happened very recently? So we can see if it's searching the web correctly. And I'm a big basketball fan. Game one of the NBA finals was last night. Let's see if it can find out who won the game. Okay, let's click reinitialize call. And I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom. Click show raw data. And look at this, the Boston Celtics won game one of the 2024 NBA Finals against the Dallas Mavericks with a score of 107 to 89. That is unbelievable. The Perplexity API is getting live data that we can use in our web apps. This is a feature that OpenAI's API is lacking and now we're able to do it. It appears as if both the small and the large perplexity online models have the same context length and the same price per 1000 requests. So unless I'm missing something, I'd rather have the model with the larger parameter count because it means it can handle more complex tasks. So let's copy this model and change this in our API call. All right, there is one more thing I wanna test out with this API and it's if it can read URLs that we send it and give us back summaries of those pages. So I've created a new bubble page. For this first input box, I'm just gonna write system message. I'm gonna make it a lot smaller. I'm gonna copy this, paste it in again. Let's move it above the button and this time call it URL. Then click on the generate button, go to edit workflow. When that button is clicked, plugins, perplexity AI chat completion. The system message is going to be multi-line input system message value, and the user content is gonna be multi-line input URLs value. Then we are going to set the state of the page. The result is going to be the result of step one, that API call, choices, first items, message content. So basically we are sending an API request to Perplexity AI. We want it to read the URL that we give it and then I'm setting the state of the page as the result, and that's gonna show at the bottom here as this text. I'm gonna hit preview page. For the system message, I'm gonna say, summarize the article, and then I'm gonna take an ESPN article about that NBA Finals game and paste it in here. So it should have no idea that we're talking about the NBA Finals unless it reads the URL. Now, I guess it can kind of read the text in the URL and know what we're talking about, but let's hope it summarizes key points in that article. We'll compare in a second. I'm going to click generate. Okay, it looks like it did it. It looks like it read the URL. Let's see here. It discusses the dominant performance in game one. They talk about the Celtics defense without relying on double teams. I think that's a good specific text that I can search in the article. So let's go control F, we go double teams. Interesting, it was mentioned in the article. We have three point advantage. Boston made 16 three pointers. Let's go 16. Yep, made 16 three pointers. They also mentioned a dominant plus 11.7 net rating. I think that is a very specific number. You won't find that in every article. Let's copy this text and paste it in, look at this. Perplexity AI actually read the article and summarized it for us. This is so exciting. My two initial API calls and then reading and summarizing that URL cost me only one cent. So this model is also so cheap. I've been thinking about adding perplexity for youraiagent.com either as a new AI agent task or as a part of an old one. If you guys have any ideas how you would like to add perplexity within your workflows, let me know in the comments below. Initially, I'm thinking that the SEO heist is gonna be a lot easier. If we can get URLs from the RSS feeds, we can send that through the perplexity API and get exact information about the newest articles 
and then have it rewrite it for our own business website. How the feature works right now is it only gets the article title because it's all that's available in the RSS feed. We get a lot more data now when we're able to scrape URLs via the API. The possibilities here are endless. If you're brand new to youraiagent.com, I'll drop a playlist link in the description below. If you have your own ideas for a web app and want to connect the Perplexity API, I've built and designed an online course called How to Build a Custom AI App. There will be a link to this in the description as well. And if you like this video, I put two more on the screen right now. Both have been catered to your personal YouTube watch history. Give one of them a click for me, give it a watch, and I'll see you in there. Peace.